Good morning, students. Welcome to the online classes of Montbrecia School. Today, I am going to start the first chapter in biology in science that is life processes. You can see it written on the board life processes chapter number 6 as per your NCERT science textbook. Now you have done many of the life processes from class 7, some in class 8 and in 9. Here in class 10 we will do in more detail. Now firstly I would like to ask a simple question to you all. How will you decide whether an organism or a thing which you see around you in your surrounding is living or non-living. Very easy. You will say that sir, if there is some movement in the body, then we will say it is living. If no such movement is there, we will say non-living. For example, if a dog is asleep, on the roadside. By looking at the movement of the chest, you will decide that yes, it is living or dead. If you find it is moving, then you will say the dog is living. If you find that there is no movement on the chest region of the dog, you will come to the conclusion that it is dead. Now, what about plants? How will you decide that whether a plant is living or not? Well, many of you will say, sir, if the leaves are green, then the plant is alive. Right? Then my next question will be, what if the leaves are not green, if it is yellow? Then some of you will think about it and say, yes, if we see that the plant is growing, then it is alive. That means you will have to decide that whether an organism is living or non-living or dead by seeing some sort of movement whether it is growth related or not. But still, there are plants, there are animals which do not show any type of such visible movements. What about them? Then, you have to go to the molecular movement. Because you know that all living organisms they are made up of cells. Inside the cell, various molecules are there. If the movement of molecules occur within the body, then it is living. For this reason, we say that virus, now all of you are very familiar of this word virus nowadays because of this pandemic due to COVID-19 virus. What is this virus? Well, outside, in the environment, in the surrounding, where it is moving, it is just like a dust particle. Means it is considered as a non-living entity. But as soon as it enters a living body, whether it is man, animal, plant, anything, that same virus now starts behaving like a living organism. How? Because then inside, after infecting a living cell, it utilizes the cellular machinery for its own self and thus starts multiplying in numbers. Means it starts reproducing, which is a living character. So that is why there is still a controversy that whether to consider viruses amongst non-living thing or amongst living thing. So, that means molecular movement inside the body is necessary to stay alive. Now, whole body, whole living organism has so many different systems in our body. 
We are having different systems in our body. Skeletal system, integumentary system, muscular system, nervous system, excretory system, respiratory system, digestive system, endocrine system. So many systems are there in our body. Now these systems are made up of various organs. The organs are made up of various tissues. The tissues are made up of various cells. The cells are made up of different cell organelles. That means there is an organized structure to maintain an organism. Now if this molecular movement does not occur within the cell, then in the course of time, due to the interaction of the environmental factor, this whole organization will break down and that living cell will become dead. That is why for maintenance of the cell, for maintenance of the tissue, for maintenance of the organ, for maintenance of the organ system and for the maintenance of the whole body, there is constant movement of molecules which helps us to survive, to stay alive. So, for this reason, there is a need to maintain all these systems together in a synchronized manner such that one system does not interfere with the working of the other. Then only it is possible for life to go on or for survival of a living organism. So children, when we are doing practically nothing, when we are sleeping, then also the maintenance work is carried on. Now how is it possible? For carrying out this maintenance work, the body needs energy. And this energy is obtained from sources outside the body. The most common source is in the form of food. So an organism requires food from the external environment. Now you know that most of the food are various compounds of carbon. Whether it is carbohydrate, whether it is protein, whether it is fat. Most of the food items are complex compounds of carbon. So first of all, the food has to be taken in. Next, the food has to be broken down. And the system which is involved is called as the digestive system. Whereby the larger molecules, the larger complex molecules are broken down into simpler ones. Now after these molecules are broken down into simpler forms, it has to be transported to each and every cell of the body. Now complex organisms have billions and billions of cells whereas unicellular organism like paramecium, euglena, bacteria, their body is simple. So substances are taken inside the body and substances are thrown out. So substances are thrown out from the body as they are brought inside is by simple process of diffusion. But in complex organisms like that of man, animals, a proper mode of transportation is required which will make it possible for things to be transported from one point to the other throughout the body. So there is a need of system called as the circulatory system. Now after that, once the food is reached to each and every cell, that food has to be broken down, it has to be oxidized and then energy is released. So another system comes into play which is called as respiration. Now after the food has been absorbed, it is assimilated to various 
productive things for the body or for growth or for repair then some harmful components are formed as by product it has to be thrown out because of all the metabolism some waste products are produced which has to be removed from the body now as i told you in case of unicellular organism most of these metabolic wastes are thrown out of the body through the skin by the simple process of diffusion but for a complex body like that of ours or animals a proper system is there which carries out this function of removing the metabolic wastes from the body so that system is called as the excretory system so children now you can understand in our life processes we will start with nutrition and through nutrition we will go through digestive system then we will do circulatory system or transportation and then we will go through respiratory system and then we will go through excretory system so four different systems we will be dealing within this chapter in detail okay so please go through the channel subscribe to it like it and if you are having the book please read up to dot so in our next class i will start nutrition okay thank you